Today, we're going to walk through the Wildfire Home Ignition Zone Evaluation. A home ignition zone evaluation is a set of recommendations tailored to your home and guard to help your house perform better during a wildfire event. Oh, hi! Hello. You're here! Thanks for coming! Of course! So we'll walk around and I'll make some recommendations for both the house and yard. Are you ready to get started? I am! Let's do it! The materials your house is built out of and the condition they are in are both important. Some recommendations will be both low cost and effective. Others will be effective but more costly. For example, the roof. So let's start there and work our way down. It looks like you have asphalt fiberglass composition shingles, which means it's a class A fire rated roof. This is great, and from here, it looks like your roof is in great condition. Your roof looks pretty good from here, but I see a little bit of debris in the front that you'll want to clean off. Yeah. You're lucky you don't have gutters to clean, too. Right? Other common class A roofing types include ceramic and concrete tiles. It looks like on this side of your house you have some gutters. It is recommended to install gutter guards to minimize the accumulation of leaf debris in your gutters. Just beware to check on them and make sure that they're still in place as some can warp with sun and leaf litter can still accumulate on top. Even better, use metal gutter guards so that they don't get warped in the sun. I noticed the corners popping up, so you might have to tack that back down or at least we'll sneak under. <laughs> We'll always secure those and yeah. keep it clear. Yeah. Easy fix though. Next, we'll look at the eaves. Your eaves have exposed wood. During a wildfire, when embers are blowing around, we don't want any gaps or pockets of dry wood where the embers could get stuck. If they get stuck for long enough, the wood itself might ignite. If there are any gaps in the lumber greater than 1 8 inch, we recommend applying caulking to fill these gaps. I'm looking for any gaps in your eaves where embers might get stuck, and they look pretty good right here. I'd recommend repainting the wood to help protect from weathering. Sometimes it's recommended to box in or soffit the eaves, mm -hmm. but that can be really costly. The National Fire Protection Agency recommends to box in or soffit the eaves. Enclosing the eaves helps to protect from under-eave flame exposure. However, the most effective thing to do is to remove any combustible items close to the eaves, such as attached fencing, vines, branches, or sheds. And even these shrubs could present a risk to the eaves. Okay. So here I'd recommend transplanting these plants so that they're not right up against the eaves. Well, the eaves look pretty good, but I'm seeing an attic vent right here. Yeah, I can just see that it's quarter inch screening on the inside, which, you know, keeps the rodents out, but embers are still able to get in. So oh, okay. it's actually recommended to go to a smaller size screening. I have a sample right here. 1 16th or 1 8th inch will keep more embers out and help protect your house. Another option is to hire someone to do a fire safe vent. If you decide to install screens yourself, keep in mind that a finer mesh screening will also reduce airflow. So we recommend using an online airflow calculator to select the appropriate screen sizes for your household. Just covering it is the yeah, idea. Yeah, something like this will also work. Perfect. While we're looking at it, I should mention the siding is stucco, which is great. We'll just look at the condition as we walk around, make sure there's not cracks or something. Okay, because we'll want to fill that. And... Exactly. Okay. So the front of your house is wood, which means you'll want to keep it well maintained. And this side looks really good. You'll also want to make sure that this buffer is at least six inches between the ground and the base of the siding. So looking at the door, ideally the door itself is solid, fire resistant, and well maintained. We look around at the door frame and check to make sure there's no gaps or areas where embers could sneak in. This door looks pretty good. Let's check out the garage door. Terrific. Garages are tricky because the weather stripping wears out and we have so many combustible items stored inside. Right. A good way to check if your weather stripping is in place is to stand inside your garage. If you see light coming in around the door, that is a sign that you need to fix the weather stripping. It looks like you have dual pane windows. Are most of your windows dual pane? Yes, other than the one on the side of the house. You'll want to inspect around the frame and make sure there's no gaps between the siding and the frame. 
Dual pane offers greater resistance to radiant heat, so for any single pane window, you want to be extra careful that there's nothing combustible nearby. For example, worst case scenario, this bush were to be on fire, that heat could potentially crack the window. Wow. In fact, this shrub here, we could transplant it or trim it back from the windows to reduce the risk. It's easy to clear. Exactly. Okay. Let's take a look at your landscaping next. All right, let's do it. This is your zone zero here, the first five feet. Right now it looks pretty dense. Zone zero is the first five feet around your house. Zone one is five to 30 feet out, and zone two is 30 to 100 feet. You can think of these zones as a gradient with little to no vegetation near the house and more vegetation as you get farther from the house. It's recommended to have little to no vegetation in zone zero. A lot of insurance are now calling for a non-combustible zone and removing all vegetation within this zone. However, if your insurance allows, keeping your plants well trimmed and small like this would be good. For starters, let's look at the ground level. Uh, if I reach my hand in here, I can pull out a handful of dry leaves piled up underneath. This could act like kindling if embers were to land on it. So I'd recommend trimming up the lowest branches of the shrub to give a little space between. And that makes it easier to clear the dry leaves and gives a little space between the ground and the live vegetation. It's within your zone zero. So I would recommend replacing this bark mulch. This could act like kindling if embers land on it in a wildfire. But you could replace it with gravel or river rock. Oh, that would look really good too. Yeah. The next thing I'd suggest is trimming these down and away from the eaves. And the last thing I would do is create some space between each shrub and from the house itself. So reducing the overall volume by creating some space between the plants. Okay, so just yeah. more space, smaller plants. Exactly, pretty doable. The safest option is to remove all vegetation except already established mature shade trees that are not fire prone species. Just trim them. Next, let's look at trees near the house. Don't plant any new trees in zone zero, but if there's an already established tree, it is important to keep it trim. It's recommended to have five feet of buffer from the roof to the tree and near a chimney, you need 10 feet of clearance. Oh, okay. You can think of the five foot buffer as extending up above the roof as well as around the house. So this tree's starting to overhang your roof. Ideally, that five foot buffer extends above the roof as well as outwards from the house. So what do you think about just trimming some of these branches back a little? And this branch right here obviously can be cut back without an issue and I think that'll give us enough space. And then you're saying with the height above, just those overhanging portions can be trimmed back enough to get that buffer. And then of course, by the chimney, you'll want 10 feet of clearance. Okay, so this yeah. bush is an issue. So for this shrub, one, you don't want things close to a chimney. You'd want 10 feet of clearance. Two, it's going right up into the eaves. And three, I see another vent back there. Yeah. So you definitely want to trim it down at the very least or consider removing it. So we'll want to trim this limb back. Yeah, and while you're trimming that branch, I'd recommend trimming some of these low branches as well. For a tree this high, we'd recommend about six feet of clearance from the ground to the lowest branches. Okay. That'll help prevent any ground fires from climbing into the canopy. So here, same idea as the front. You'll want to trim this bush down and pull it back from the house a little bit. Okay, get some space, obviously, so it's not really right up against it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And then over here, where the fence attaches to the house, it's actually recommended to replace the first five feet with a non-combustible material. It's great that your fencing is non-combustible. Right? And what beautiful native plants you have. Oh, thank you. It's really nice to have a little habitat with birds and bees and the butterflies that come through. I really love it. Remember, even a stone wall can become a pathway for fire if covered in dense woody vegetation. Metal is preferable. If a fire were to start somewhere else, you don't want the fence being a pathway directly to the house of fire. It would act as a fuse, right? Yeah, kind of with the same idea. You want to trim back these vines because they're starting to grow right up towards the eaves. And then they're also growing into the tree, which is a ladder fuel. And then you don't want embers to be shooting from the tree onto your house. So simply creating some space between the vines and the fence and the tree. Over here looks super awesome, where the fence is like really clean and nothing up against it. Should we check out the other side of the yeah, house? Yeah, let's go. Okay. 
So it looks like these sheds are within your zone zero because they're not right up against the house, but they are within five feet. So you'll want to take extra precautions to harden them since it'd be really hard to move them. So the same ideas we talked about for the house. So starting with the roof, this is wood shake shingles, which as aesthetic as it is, not great for fire. I would replace it with a class A fire rated roof. Okay. And then I'm noticing some damage to the wood, maybe termites in the back there. Pockets like the termite holes can catch embers and ignite the whole shed. Wow, okay. Even covering this open space in the back would help so that embers don't get in and ignite anything in there. Yeah, this one looks like it's in really good condition. They have those asphalt shingles. The wood is well maintained. The paint's protecting it. I just see a gap right here. You could put some weather stripping there. So the shade structure is attached to the house, which means you can think of it as part of the house itself mm -hmm. in terms of home hardening. What that would mean is it's just as important to fix the missing shingle on the shade structure as the roof itself, okay. just so that embers can't ignite it. And then continue to keep clear around the edge because the zone zero starts at the edge of the attachment. Okay. And it's already great that the patio area is non-combustible. <laughs> well, that works for me. As we move into zone one, five to 30 feet from your house, the spacing of plants is very important. On a relatively flat landscape like this one, you can create vegetation islands by clustering your plants in small groups and interspersing them with walkways in open space. On sloped landscapes, you will want to account for more space between individual plants because fire travels faster uphill. This is a good example of a ladder field, the way the ivy is growing up into the birch tree, and also these shrubs are growing up into the low branches. So what you'd want to do is trim out the ivy and trim the shrubs back from the tree. Okay, just get that off and more clearance. Exactly. Okay. For smaller properties like this one, your zone two overlaps with your neighbor's yard. Whenever possible, work together with your neighbors and talk about your shared defensible space. Well, I'll email you your report and some other resources. Excellent, all right, today's been terrific. Thank you, I learned so much today. Oh, you're welcome. And feel free to encourage your neighbors to sign up. Thank you so much for your time and all your help. Bye. Bye, -bye.